Hey guys, it's Kyle. Um, one of the most frequently asked questions that I get is how to mount your knife in the sharpener and find the correct blade positioning, as well as how to set your angle um, and know what angle you need to sharpen each knife at. So right now I've got my, uh, my Chris Reeves small and cozy. Um, and then the first thing I do, it's a smaller knife. So I'm gonna insert my depth key into the top settings in the vise. There's two here. And this is a Wicked Edge Pro Pack 2, by the way. Um, so into the top settings and then I put my knife in and rest the spine on both prongs of the depth key. And then on this knife, this is my only flat surface to clamp to. So I'm gonna try and get it in right there. And then tighten the top screw and then the bottom screw. And you can remove your depth key. And the next thing, color the bevel with a marker. Just stab it on and run it all the way down. And then you wanna loosen up your L, your L bracket, so it slides freely along the degree bar. And then always use your finest diamond stone to test your, your angle and your knife positioning. So I'm gonna use my thousand grit, and then I'm gonna hold this L bracket right here at 20 degrees and just make a pass. And I'm just watching to see how the marker comes off. So I think, hopefully I can shine this flashlight on there and you guys can see how that marker is being removed. So you see how it's being removed at the very edge of the knife here and then it slopes down into the shoulder of the bevel here. And that lets me know that my knife is positioned too far backwards. So I want to position it a little bit, clamp it closer to the tip. So again, loosen your knife a little bit. And then reinsert your depth key. And then clamping it just a little bit farther forward. and then try it again. So that's a little bit better, but I'm still not quite there. Um, I'm still removing the metal at the very edge of the knife here, of the bevel here, and I'm removing it towards the shoulder here. Um, so I'm basically out of flat places on the knife to clamp to. I can't really clamp any farther forward than that, but what I can do is tilt the knife. So I'm just gonna tip it a little bit upwards, and again, I want to be contacting at least one prong of the depth key. Uh, so, tilt it a little bit farther upwards, probably about right there. And I'm still contacting the flat point of the knife, I just got it tilted, so I'm only contacting one point of the depth key. So now again, make a pass. Just do a little scrubbing on it. And that's just about perfect, except I think my angle is just a little bit wide at 20 degrees. So I'm gonna try 19. I'll try 18. And that's it right there. So you notice at 18 degrees with the knife positioned this way, all of the marker comes off of the edge and that's exactly where you wanna be. So then you'd wanna record this so that the next time you go to sharpen, sharpen this knife, you don't have to, your knife, you don't have to mess around with the uh, with the positioning and try and figure it out again. So what I do is I use my alignment guide and the depth key, just put the alignment guide right on the depth key like that and then stick it into the vise like so. And then you can see where the tip of the knife is aligned um, and that's right at A.5. So I'd write down A.5 for this knife and I'd write down top depth setting. And then if your knife is tilted like this, Wicked Edge has a tool called an advanced alignment guide. So you can, it has an X and Y grid on it. So you can measure where the tip falls. If you don't have that, I just take a picture of the knife um, and how you have it clamped and that will let you know, give you a rough idea of how to put it back in there. All right. So then I'm just gonna test the angle on the opposite side to make sure it's correct as well. It should be right around, pretty close, but I always like to check one side differently than the other, not just assume that both sides are the same angle. Yeah, and that looks, that looks really good at 18 degrees. So this knife, it is the same angle on both sides. So this knife's got a pretty close to factory edge on it, so I don't need to use a coarse stone. So I'm gonna start with a 400 grit. And then I just do some scrubbing like this, an up and down motion. 
until I make sure that all that marker is completely gone. There's still a little couple spots in there where it was still there. And then I check for the burr. And the burr is that just small little bit of metal, also called a wire edge, that curls over from one side to the other. And that's what lets you know that this, the bevel on this side is intersecting with the bevel on the other side. So once you found the burr, then you do the same on the opposite side. There it is. All right, and once you found it, I'll usually, you can do like five passes on both sides. And then switch to your next grit. And this is a 600 grit. Typically, I'll do about 20 passes per stone per side. And the pass is really simple. All it is is start with your stone all the way down against the heel of the knife and finish it so that the bottom of the stone comes off the tip of the knife. Just like so. Switch to my 800 and 1000 grit stones. And that's it. I'm basically done. I always check the edge to make sure I not, didn't miss a spot or that's as sharp as I want it to be before I remove it. That way I don't have to mess around with clamping it. And this edge feels, feels perfect to me. It's sharper than factory. Thanks for watching, guys.